Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for coming um, and attending uh, this fireside chat. Um, so it's good to be back at MIT. Likewise. <laughs> uh, I remember coming to this room for uh, Tom Layton from Akamai's class 6042, Mathematics of Computer Science, my freshman year, I believe. So it's, uh, um, it's good to be here. Definitely more awake than I was back then <laughs> for, the, for, that, for that. So um, Silvio, um, first question I have for you is, when did you first discover uh, Bitcoin, and what did you think about it when you first uh, heard hear about the, the technology? Oh, wow. So first of all, I discovered Bitcoin very late. Why? Because I'm a kind of an obsessed about one thing for a few years, then I change things, obsess about the two, and move on. So I was otherwise obsessed. So but finally, when I woke up after the transition of these uh, few years, I asked one of my students, I said, what is this Bitcoin? And so they gave me a private lecture, and I said, wow, what is a beautiful idea, but you know, what inelegant solution. So somehow I, I immediately loved the, the plan, I really loved you know, the philosophy, but somehow the technology I felt uh, could be better. In some sense, there is a great alignment in philosophy between uh, Bitcoiners and uh, yeah. Algorand, but you know, the, the technology, in my opinion, uh, uh, I wanted to be different. So, so criticizing is always easy, right? So uh, doing things is a bit different. So I say, okay, if I don't like it, what do I do? So I locked myself in a room, and three months later, I came up with a design that is now the backbone of uh, Algorand. And, uh, what year was that? It was uh, uh, 2017. Mm. 2017, yeah. Very cool. So uh, bringing me to the next question, which is please describe for the audience here um, what Algorand is, you know, how is it different than BTC and some of the other layer ones, and how did you come up with the, uh, the underlying ideas? OK. So all blockchains are equal in uh, keeping uh, the chain secure so that you cannot alter the content of the blocks or the order of the blocks. Everybody uses the same technology there. 50 years old, the prehistoric cryptographic technology, the hash function, right? And what, what the difference is, is that who has the damn right to choose the next block or transaction and append it to the chain? It almost seems a political problem, right? So that is what the tech does. And so proof of work, does it say, you know what, it shouldn't be me, it shouldn't be you. Uh, you know, we live in um, a contest. The first one who solves a very complex cryptographic riddle has the right to append the block to the chain. So the expectation was, sometimes I will win, sometimes you'll win, we'll pass it around, it's going to be distributed. Turns around that uh, became an arm race, so everybody wants to solve a riddle to have the power of appending the block, so you need a few supercomputers to even have a chance. You need many, many more than a few supercomputers to have a chance to append the block. So it became very expensive. And when things become expensive, guess what? Become centralized. Fewer and fewer people can absorb it. So that was not decentralized at the end. Proof of stake is a variety of uh, solutions. The most popular is uh, uh, delegated proof of stake. What does this mean? Simple. We choose those 10 people, don't they look uh, honest? Sure they do. And let's hope they remain honest for the foreseeable future. Let's give them the power to choose the block on behalf of all of us. Is this decentralized? Hell no, right? So the idea in, in, in Algorand is that uh, we want it to be scalable and we want it to be decentralized. So we have, a, think of it, a cryptographic lottery that you know, takes a you know, microsecond to execute and picks up who has uh, any algo, which is our native, native currency. So if you have one algo, you have a chance to be selected, and everybody um, um, uh, is, is selected eventually, and, um, and that's the way it works. So we scale because uh, the process, there is no complicated riddles, is uh, your, you run your own cryptographic lottery, think about uh, lowering the slot machine, but you can lower it only once, and uh, either you win or you don't win, but if you win, you get a winning ticket, and you show it, it's my time to act and to vote the block up or down, and, uh, and you propagate your winning ticket and your vote virally. 
this scales because it takes one microsecond of computation. Even I can afford the electricity of one second of computation, or even an hour, but a microsecond is very, very cheap. So it scales because of that, because everybody can afford it. We lower the amount. There is no sacred uh, uh, tokens which is more valuable than somebody else. Nobody is more valuable than something. Uh, if you want to participate to our consensus, not only you are allowed, but you can technologically, with your laptop, participate. That's very important to us. We are really scalable and decentralized. By the way, where we are secure, because if I were somehow a very bad guy and I am uh, at the snap on the finger, I can corrupt anybody who wants on planet Earth, whom I want to corrupt? Who is going to win this lottery? Chances, the problem is, I don't know who is going to win this lottery. And once I know, because they come up with a winning ticket and the opinion about the block, I can corrupt them right away. But it's too late. Whatever I had to say, they already said, it's virally propagating over a network. And so, damn, I cannot corrupt beforehand, and it's useless to corrupt afterwards. That's why it's secure, right? So we want to have a truly decentralized system, scalable, because many, many of us want to transact, and they should be able to transact, and we want to really be a very democratic system where the participation bar is very, very low. Yeah, and as one of the uh, earliest uh, you know, validators for Algorand, I'm very impressed because not only are you guys super decentralized, but haven't dropped um, many blocks in your, since 2017 or 18. I must say that we, you know, uh, we all should be proud of whatever we are doing. We are very proud to have produced the 20 million blocks and, and, and change every 4.4 seconds without interruption. So no downtime. And I believe that it is important because, uh, um, in my opinion, a blockchain uh, um, uh, is, is not only about speculation. Because if a speculative blockchain, if it's down for a couple of hours every month, say, ah, I'll speculate tomorrow, right? But you know, if you use the blockchain for some important uh, financial or healthcare services or whatever you, you want to do, if he, the blockchain is down and you cannot transact, that's not good, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's very impressive relative to um, other protocols out there. Um, so let's talk about privacy for a little bit. So Algorand is very focused on you know, having transparency for its developers, its communities, its users, and has a big focus on transparency. In today's world, um, as the asset class gets bigger and there's more people trying to hack the general um, you know, space, and, and people are talking more and more about privacy and privacy-focused applications. How does Algorand think about privacy in, in their eyes? So in terms of hacking, that privacy is different, right? So I don't believe, by being truly decentralized, there is not one point of attack, there is not 10 point of attack, there is not 100 point of attack, there is not 1,000 point of attack, et cetera, et cetera. Hacking is very hard. Privacy, however, people value privacy, and um, they should have it too. Um, we made a strategic decision. By the way, I've been a cryptographer for 40 years, okay? So uh, we've, um, uh, we've participated here at MIT to forge you know, the tools of uh, public key cryptography as we know it, but we felt that it uh, would be too much confusion with, um, uh, with the regulators and things to say, first of all, there is already a big revolution to have things decentralized. Now you want to see if nobody can see what's going on is a little bit too much. So I felt that uh, we wanted to say a message that you know, uh, the blockchain is really here for doing social change. And uh, we do that first. We show how decentralized we are. We, we are a transactional platform. And we'll add the privacy later so everybody begins a bit more comfortable rather than having everything at once and possibly generate a lot of uh, um, undue hostility with, for a lack of knowledge. I think you, you, you have to do gradually, but we are going to have privacy on the Algorand blockchain, and if I may say, we're going to be pretty good privacy on the Algorand blockchain. So far, we have the pseudo privacy, but, you know, but uh, not knowing who is behind the one key, and that is um, good enough in most of, um, about applications. But if you want to do rigorously, rigorous privacy, zero knowledge proofs and things like this, it, it takes it to another level. This is going to be uh, next. Next. What, and can you give uh, the audience some, some timelines here or of, you know, some alpha on how you guys are thinking about So, yeah, that? first of all, you know, believe it or not, we have a great, you know, um, um, our uh, 
technology. Let me tell you one thing that is about Algorand. I, something we got right from the beginning. And so it is our DNA that we want to have our chain to be upgradable by consensus, consensually improvement. Mm. Because I do yeah. not know anything that is fixed in life and remains living for very long or relevant for very long. So anytime that there is a better technology to do absorb. Next is going to be, we have a great performance, but we think we, we need an even greater performance, so we are going to have you know, a 10x improvement you know, by quarter three. We are going to have uh, some uh, decentralized uh, uh, token bridges, that is uh, next, and the white decentralized token bridges. Remember, it's very, it's possible to be good at many things. But to be great at all things, that's a totally different story. And so there is no reason for which you know, we should not be great at something and somebody else would be great at something else. So I believe it is natural that uh, in the blockchain space, there is going to be not one winner takes it all, but there is going to set. The world perhaps doesn't need 6,000 blockchains, okay? But 12, 24, so the auto is uh, very nice that everybody is, does better something but, uh, than anybody else. And so therefore, you want to bring your asset to another chain when it's going to be served is better than in your chain and then bring it back after it's been serviced. But, but the chain is decentralized. The other chain, hopefully for you, is decentralized too. But the bridges right now are centralized. So there are some one trustee, three trustee, rolled up, prop up with a shaky thing, which you know, you send your asset over and you don't know if the bridge is going to be standing up when you want it back. So what is going to be next for us is to have really a decentralized bridge. Who holds the bridge? Blockchain A and blockchain B. You trust blockchain A because your asset is there right now. You trust blockchain B because you want to bring your asset there. You don't need to trust anybody else, thank you very much. Because all these, you know, five people, if uh, three of which are honest, the bridge will continue to exist, blah, 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 blah. In reality, a blockchain that works is going to secure trillions of dollars in value. And these people here say, I make you whole if you really have a problem. Make you whole, oh, where is the trillion dollars that you set aside? Oh, they post a very small amount of money, so we really believe that uh, it's not even the idea to go after the assets, which is going to be minuscule relative to the value of the chain anyway. And uh, what do you do? You sue them? Is in a smart contract in which chain? Uh, everything makes no sense. Decentralized bridges is what allow us to interoperate properly as we should be in a, a, a multiple uh, ecosystem. Yeah, from an investor's perspective, the whole concept of bridging is, is very, very hot today, yes. right? You have layer zero, XLR, you have wormhole, a lot of large, um, from an investor's perspective, our uh, large investors are, uh, you know, kind of putting a stake and picking their horse. So it's good to know that, um, you know, Algorand is, is focused on, on cross-chain bridges as well. Um, and, and what's very interesting, because we're at the Bitcoin, you know, expo, uh, what you said about upgradability of, of, a, of a layer one protocol makes a lot of sense. Um, although people uh, who are kind of Bitcoin maxis or folks who are Bitcoin core devs, you'll, you'll know if you talk to them, you know, th they're thinking about ways how do we ossify uh, Bitcoin even more and, and, and think about ways to um, not um, kind of accept changes. Uh, it's just a different type of mentality um, where, you know, Bitcoin is, is probably going to have many fewer changes um, than Algorand and other uh, protocols. So... Yeah. So it's a different philosophy, it is right. And so we all have experience, you know, the changing of the post in, post in the middle of a game, and nobody likes that, okay? So the last thing I want to say, you come in because there is one philosophy and things change completely on the other side. But while, however, if you have uh, something that 80% of the people have to agree to make a change, is this so dangerous? And by the way, if we can give you a decentralized bridge to say, before this change happens, which I disagree, okay, then you can sh ship your asset somewhere else, I think we must have the ability to guide ourselves. Look, 
You have improved in your life how many times? I hope I've done the same. So life is about you know, continual adaptation to changing circumstances. And if we are not all capable of doing this or not willing to do this, you know, um, the dinosaurs didn't want or could not adapt fast enough. So I think you know, we should preserve the stability, but with the centralized bridge and setting the threshold of consensus, in our case is 80%, before we do an upgrade, uh, I think it is a good thing. You don't want to be set a course with an ocean liner, storm, no storm, iceberg, no iceberg, and say, well, now I set a course, I should keep it no matter what. It doesn't strike me to be such you know, an alluring uh, possibility. All right, so let's talk a little bit about another category, which is DeFi uh, and democratizing finance <clears throat> for everyone around the world. What does that mean to the Algorand Foundation, uh, and how do you think about DeFi in the grand scheme of things? I think DeFi is a really a great you know, um, opportunity for, uh, for, uh, for humanity, done right, right, and we want to do to done right, and it has to be really decentralized, and it has to be very little cost. Because otherwise, we, you know, if there are DeFi tools which are uh, expensive, we are back in you know, that nobody can really transact, and uh, there is no democratization of the economy, which is one of the main goals of Algorand. So there is now various platforms, you know, AlgoFi, uh, Fox Finance, um, there are um, 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 uh, remittances, uh, Opulos, so it is a way to make a liquid um, um, uh, assets for artists. Uh, there are um, uh, marketplaces for artists, you know. So we really need to know all, all this decentralization is great. There are various projects also that uh, I believe that uh, they need uh, uh, liquidity and, uh, and uh, of various sort. Let me, uh, two projects I'm particularly fond of, they actually come to us from the way of Argentina. One is AgroToken, that is a way to, to essentially represent as a token grains. Think about it, you have a ton of wheat and uh, you uh, geolocate it, uh, you uh, record the temperature, the graded humidity and things, and now you have a token. That is immediate liquidity for the farmers, which, by the way, their liquidity depends on all sellers that they say, I'll buy everything you have at this price, which is not the price you want. So to be able to do this you know, uh, immediately and giving a, a, a bet is a very important. Another project, which is a, a, a TravelX, and uh, is, um, believe it or not, is a great project because there is one financial instrument that does not have a secondary market. And what it is, travel tickets. Congratulations, you bought a travel ticket. You cannot pay, too bad for you. I'll see you later, bye. Thank you for your money. So that is not the way the world should, should work, right? And so uh, to, to enable or to, um, um, to resell it, knowing on the blockchain that actually you are really the owner, the ticket really exists. It's not a piece of paper with uh, some kind of a stamp, right? I think uh, it, all these things are really point in the direction that you have to be the owner of your own information and uh, your own data, and by the way, and, uh, and also your um, um, financial instruments. And you know, um, 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 tickets is one particular one of them. And so somehow we live in a world in which we are sucked off of our own data, now belongs to me. Really? I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's about we take this uh, business plan and turn it on, on their heads, and we want to be at the helm of our own um, data information and finance. So, so talking about some more real-world applications and partnerships, um, you know, Algorand is the official partner of FIFA, um, which, you know, it's uh, pretty impressive, you know, having partnered with a governing body that, um, you know, has a sport that has four billion followers or more. What does that mean uh, to Algorand and, you know, that partnership for bringing decentralization to the world? I'll, I'll tell you, um, uh, I was um, very, uh, when uh, FIFA approached us, because these guys have scales, okay? <laughs> so there are, are five billion uh, plants, so it is more than uh, you take, you know, the, the two most popular religions combined, uh, and even more. And so, and they, and they really want to bring the sports, bring us together very often in ways that other uh, things and music and art are really good. And so, and they really want to, the people to transact. And so, 
they needed a blockchain with a at scale and with a, they really had a blockchain that really believed in the in democratization and access. And so you don't want to somehow the funds to be users, you want to be members of a community. And to the members of a community, you need you know, um, 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 a smart protocol that allows you to interact, right? So you can imagine what the um, things you could do if you want to bring uh, together a community. Say, uh, um, I'm making it up, okay? But they say, assume we want to buy a ticket, and if you really want to make popular, the cost of a ticket is X. But if five people, one per continent, buy the tickets and sitting one, two, three, four, five, everybody pays half, okay, or <laughs> something like this. It's already something that they say, okay, obliges you to say, to whom he wants to team up with me to do this. You can generate a community, you can do all kinds of things. But it's very, very important that uh, the cost is very low. Because unfortunately today, as you know, um, wealth is not very well spread. And so if you go five billion people, the, uh, the income of five billion people, the average is going to be very low. So it's very, very important to offer these uh, services and, tr and transactions at a very low cost. So one transaction, like a payment, or uh, uh, is uh, one fraction of one cent in Algorand, and that is, in my opinion, is about right. Because when you talk about 50 cents per transaction, it's very cavalier for us, which are privileged uh, to say, oh, 50 cents, who cares? Well, 50 cents is a lot of money if your salary is $50 a month, okay? So uh, I wouldn't be, so a fraction of a cent is much better. And by the way, it's not only transaction like a unilateral transaction like payments, but a bilateral transaction that brings people together. So you and I, you can be in Thailand, I can be in Sicily, and we can uh, exchange an asset for money or an asset for another asset, right? Or an NFT for another NFT, we want to swap them. And so this happens also in 4.4 seconds in a secure way, because in Algorand, that is the same transaction. It's not an escrow, I put my, nothing of all this, it's a native transaction and the cost of one fraction of a cent, all these things are really make it possible, in my opinion, to serve such a large community. Yeah, I think um, you know, there's definitely a lot of um, kind of applications that are getting built on top of Algorand. When you think of, like for the audience, right, there's, there's developers out there, investors out there, um, and for the developers, you know, I think blockchains are you know, sometimes very difficult to develop on depending on which layer one or layer two you're working with. Um, Algorand has a, a steadfast focus on making development uh, very, very user-friendly for um, software engineers and others um, with your AVM, Algorand Virtual Machine, to other developer tools. And even in last year, you guys won the Devi's um, award for, sure. uh, for the most, um, you know, for Algorand Developer Portal. Um, so, how, how do you, you know, think about, you know, if you had to pitch all the students and devs out there, you know, because that's kind of the, the crux of this, is you need to have applications getting built on top of Algorand. So, you know, can you explain a little bit more about your focus on, you know, making development um, as easy as possible? Yes. So, first of all, uh, as, you, um, um, so as you notice, there have been, uh, um, we've been, um, a world that is so much easier to develop. We make sure to decouple some of our knowledge of the protocol from, so you want to focus on building your app without knowing much about how the protocol works. Uh, and I think we, we've done a very good job about that. And then also we created a bunch of uh, native uh, building blocks, native available in Algorand without coding anything. So things like this uh, atomic swap, which I think is, a, uh, is, a, is an important aspect. And, and or issuing um, your own token, no better, better way, or even an issue of uh, fungible or non-fungible. You say how many, you want to tokenize an entire building, you decide you know, how many shares of a building you want to issue ever, how many shares you issue now, who is uh, the issuer, who has the clawing back rights if necessary, freezing rights and things, you push a button, 4.4, like, you don't write any line of software, so what is important is that at that point, what you want to do is that you can actually see 80% of whatever you want to do already pre-made. And when you want to do your application, you can write your code in, uh, in Python, you can write it in Go, you can write it in Java, in Java, et cetera. 
and then rest, rest. And then what you want to do is then you compile it automatically into our spatial language. And by the way, uh, we were, uh, it's important to keep the language and then the two of these compilers. We didn't want to be compatible uh, EVM, IVM. We are very proud to, be, to have our own brand because I believe that you know, premature standardization is a, is a, <coughs> ossifies the market before we really know what, to, what we need. And so it's a bit, right now, things are improving. It is not that I, you know who wants to standardize things? People who want to preserve the status quo. I really think there is so much innovation going on that we should go and innovate as much as we can. And rather than uh, um, uh, making things uh, sclerotic and, uh, and, uh, and unchangeable, and everybody has to be compatible with something which was, you know, uh, is not exactly perfect for us, right? So I've, uh, that has been our, uh, our uh, philosophy that may, made, you know, I'm, I'm very glad that you know, so many people in, uh, in uh, DeFi and payments and remittances and things are using us because uh, uh, we made it easier. We, we really tried to make it easy for them. Perfect. I think that was a, a perfect finish. I think I'm getting called for time now. So thank you, Silvio, for your time. Thank you.